Just a few days after Russia began military operations in Ukraine, a new symbol of the anti-war opposition appeared online, the white-blue white flag. As described in the viral tweet you see on screen now, the beautiful parliamentary Russia of the future does not yet have a symbol. How do you like this flag? De-Sovietized, without blood, the cult of war, and not based on imperial ambitions. Roughly a month after this, we released a short about flags used in the Russo-Ukrainian war, which did not include the white-blue-white white flag. Honestly, I'm glad some viewers pointed this out, because I actually hadn't even heard about the flag at that point. But fast forward a bit, and having done some research, I think it's more than time we cover the white-blue-white white flag's admittedly somewhat short story, along with the design's historical connection to the Novgorod Republic. Okay, starting off in the 21st century, the white-blue-white white flag was pretty much simultaneously created by an anonymous Russian artist, Fish Sounds, and Kai Katonina, a 31-year-old UX designer, also Russian, based in Berlin, Germany. The flag's design is pretty simple, consisting of a white-blue-white white horizontal triband. White symbolizes peace, purity, and prudence, while blue stands for truth and justice. When compared to the modern Russian flag, the most obvious design change is the removal of the lower red stripe, which, in light of the Russo-Ukrainian war, some perceive as symbolizing blood, violence, autocracy, and militarism. The second, perhaps less noticeable change is the shade of blue. Or wait, is that Azure? Okay, I had to look up how to pronounce that. Fundamental fact that Azure, we have Azure, the Azure Digital Twin Service. This very rich cloud infrastructure in Azure. I won't lie, to me, it's light blue. But in some countries, Azure is viewed as a completely different color. And in regards to the white blue white flag, sometimes actually called the white Azure white flag, the change in tone is a callback to Russia's pre-1993 flag, which featured a much lighter shade of blue when compared to the modern flag. This choice of color likely also has ideological importance, resembling the former flag of Veliki Novgorod, which at one point was the capital of the Novgorod Republic, a Russian city-state dating back to the 12th century that, during its time, was among the most democratic in the whole of Europe. More on that in a moment. In wanting to keep the flag's design simple and replicable, there is, as of yet, no official shade of blue or azure. With the flag's own website, which I'll link down below in the description, stating, This is the people's flag. If your flag is recognizably white, azure, white, that's good enough. That being said, there are two recommended shades and proportions listed on the website. In something of a happy coincidence, according to the designers, the white-blue-white white flag is also quite similar to the white-red-white white flag used by the Belarusian opposition. Yet another people that, quoting the flag's own website again here, are also fighting against an illegitimate government. Belarus's Alexander Lukashenko, the country's first and so far only president, often being described as Europe's last dictator. All right, so going back to the Novgorod Republic. This was, as mentioned, one of the most democratic states in Europe during its time. Though much about the actual Novgorodian constitution remains unclear, its people, from so-called borough masters to the lowest of freeborn classes, did, for roughly 340 years, exercise real political authority through a network of public assemblies called vetches. Concerning the white-blue-white white flag, this pre-imperial history is important for several reasons, including, quote, its symbolic rejection of the encroachment onto the territory of the Southern Rus, Kievian Rus, and of any claims to independent territories that were previously part of the Russian Empire. The Novgorod Republic was a somewhat decentralized state, which at times stood in opposition to Muscovy, and therefore can be viewed as a rejection of that czarist autocratic state. To be fair though, some have pushed back on the flag resembling that of Novgorod, noting that Prince Oleg the Seer actually invaded Kiev in the late 9th century. Others have argued that removing the red stripe also removes the legacy of all those who have sacrificed their lives to build Russia. Symbols, however, take on meaning that is given to them, and right now, the white-blue-white white flag has become one of the most recognizable symbols of the Russian opposition, something seemingly also recognized by Moscow, which has moved to ban the white-blue-white white flag as part of a broader crackdown on anti-war protests in Russia itself. 
Before wrapping up this episode, I just wanted to say that the white-blue-white white flag is not the only symbol of opposition, and in fact, it is almost exclusively used in anti-war protests outside of Russia. Inside the country, green ribbons have become the most obvious sign of dissent, being tied to lampposts, fences, statues, and buildings. Anyway, thanks again for watching. If you'd like to learn more about a different aspect of the Russo-Ukrainian War, check out our videos on the history of Crimea. Also, don't forget to give this video a like, and let us know your thoughts on the white-blue-white flag in the comments section down below.